blimey, I must have been eight or nine years old, I think. I need to work out the exact <laughs> age one day. Um, but yeah, I got taken to Starlight Express, another Starlight Express, uh, in the West End. It was the original installation of Starlight Express. We were sitting in the circle, uh, watching the show, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these sort of barrier things that had just been attached to the front of the circle started moving of their own accord. I didn't know why they were there. And then suddenly these uh, roller skaters came flying around this track right in front of us. And then once they'd gone, they just magically moved back in again. And already I was thinking that was super cool. Uh, and I didn't know what did that, but that was quite fun, fancy. Uh, and then later on in the show, this bridge descended from the roof and it rotated round and it lowered into place. And that formed part of the, uh, the track as well. And there was green lasers going on and all sorts of things. And I just remember being blown away by that and thinking, I don't know what that is, but that was really cool. Uh, and that was it, really. I suppose I had that memory uh, and then planted a seed, perhaps. And then there we were, what, 10, 12, 15 years later, um, leaving university and uh, yeah, and then getting into it. So, But that was definitely my first memory of automation. I can't really remember my first uh, experience of automation. Probably I didn't really realise it was automation. Uh, I think that's one of the things, once you're involved in this industry, uh, you can't now, I can't now go to a show and not look to see how they automate this, how this moves. And uh, sometimes I long for those days before uh, I was involved in the industry when I could just experience the show for what it was and this magic just happened. Uh, yeah. Now I'm involved in making the magic happen and... Uh, you know, I'm always looking to see, oh, how have they done that? How have they done this? But uh, it probably would have been um, not so much a West End show, I think. It would probably have been a concert, uh, maybe in my early uh, school days, uh, going to a, a gig, something like that. And I wouldn't have probably realised it. I would just have enjoyed the show. Part of that would be listening to customers. Uh, we People tell us what they want. Uh, we've also had the advantage, or good and lucky advantage for us, of being uh, out on tour and using equipment before um, being involved with Kinesis. So we can see it from both sides, both from a, a manufacturer's point of view and from a, a customer and end user's point of view. And we also try and use our uh, knowledge and experience of what we think customers would like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first word that came to mind was listen, I think. So it's we have to try to walk this fine line between listening to feedback about what customers want. Um, but of course, a lot of that is driven by what they, what they already know. Yeah. So they're used to using equipment that does a certain number of things and they'd like just to extend that functionality a little bit. So that's great. But also our job as manufacturers is trying to see the trends before they happen so we can provide equipment before anybody even realized they needed it. That's the goal. That's the, the holy grail of being an equipment manufacturer is you can come up with a product that people didn't even realize they needed until it appeared and yeah. then they wonder how they ever lived without it. <laughs> Probably had its genesis back in 2009 when we worked on the U2 360 tour. Uh, so there was a huge video wall on that that had to not only fly up and down, and it did that on, on a bunch of very big heavy winches, but also the whole wall itself had to compress and, and stretch out. And that was done using 40 chain hoists. Uh, we built something called an Evo chain hoist for that. And that was sort of the predecessor of what is now the Apex. So that was a zero speed, high spec, high precision um, chain hoist product. And then we looked at it and then evolved it on, appropriately enough for Evo as a name, uh, and turned it into Apex because we needed to bring a whole bunch of new, of, uh, new safety technology into it as well to allow us to meet what the current standards now were um, in terms of sensing and, uh, and, and detecting for potential faults in the system. So we took, took that new technology, added it into the Evo product and Apex was born. So that's really where it's come from. Variable speed for me. Uh, when I first started off with automation, um, it was pretty radical if you could just have a fixed speed chain hoist and it would go to position. So I think uh, 
that's been one of the key things is just the the fact that automation now is assumed to be variable speed the complexity of the control systems and the integration with other products be it lighting video yeah, I would say that. I think there's a few things for me. I think it's absolutely integration with other products. It used to be that automation just stood alone and lighting stood alone and video stood alone. And now all three have to work in harmony to make sure they all synchronize together and one the movement of one impacts on, on what you see on the other. I think the scale of productions as well, just the size of a production and the amount of automation and, and trickery and technology that's on them now to make a great show that's another key uh, element of it as well. And I think also, finally, uh, just the the minimum entry level that you have to turn up with now in terms of technology, because people's uh, ideas of what's acceptable have moved on so much. You know, since we started, you've had iPhones, you've had iPads, yeah. you've had everything. So now people's understanding of what something should look like and how it should work and the minimum specification that software should have in order to be just acceptable is so much of a higher bar than it used to be before. So um, those three things all kind of melded together keeps mm. us on our toes because there's always stuff to do and, and things to change to, yeah. to make sure we meet all of those criteria. Well, uh, we've got some exciting additions to the Apex range that we're investigating at the moment. So hopefully we'll have more news about those over the next mm -hmm. few months. Um, so that's one key thing. We're also looking at the other side of what we do, which is load cells, to see uh, how we can extend some of those uh, product lines as well. So, mm -hmm. so without giving too much away, um, definitely movement in both of those markets.